Thank you very much. Hello and good afternoon. My name is Dr. David Tuck. I am the founder and CEO of Lightpoint Medical. So there are three words that no one in this room wants to hear, which is, you have cancer. And amazingly, one in two women and one in three men will hear those words at some point in their lifetime. And what's worse, those patients are going to find out that surgeons have no way to detect their cancer intraoperatively. And as we heard in the previous presentation, surgeons don't have any way to detect the cancer intraoperatively, so often they leave cancerous tissue behind or remove more healthy tissue than is needed. This was highlighted, for example, in a recent experience where I was observing a prostate cancer patient having his prostate removed, and the surgeon leans over to me and he says, do you see this nodule on the patient's nerve bundle? Is this cancerous or not? Should I cut it? And that's the dilemma that practicing cancer surgeons face every day in their procedures. So numerous companies over the past decades have attempted to address this enormous medical need but we feel that we have the only compelling solution. The reason that is, is our technology is based on miniaturizing proven diagnostic imaging technology and bringing that technology into the operating room in the form of a miniature laparoscopic probe. This represents an approximate 200-fold reduction in the size of the scanning technology that normally underlies a SPECT or a PET imaging scanner. It's so compact that I can actually carry it in my pocket so that we've been able to miniaturize a nuclear medicine technology from the size of a conference room down to the size of a pen cap. Also importantly, this approach takes advantage of what's known as molecular targeted surgery, where the patient is injected with a cancer targeted radiotracer that binds to a specific surface marker on the cancerous tissue. For example, in the case of prostate cancer, we're targeting prostate-specific membrane antigen, which is highly specific to prostate carcinoma. With regards to the workflow, the patient is injected with a cancer-targeted radiotracer that accumulates, for example, in the cancerous lymph nodes and then can be detected intraoperatively using our laparoscopic probe. The probe is called Sensei, as in the Japanese martial arts instructor. And as you saw, it's a flexible probe, similar to a ultrasound probe, that is inserted into a standard surgical trocar, which I happen to have in my other pocket. So this is a standard surgical port. The surgeon drops the probe into the port. They then use their laparoscopic forceps to grab the probe and benefit from the full wristed dexterity that comes with the laparoscopic approach. We then output to the intuitive surgical console or to a separate base station that we commercialize separately. So this represents the first flexible probe for real-time cancer detection. Importantly, it works with existing diagnostic radio tracers. This is a key point from a business perspective because many of our competitors are trying to address this challenge by developing targeted fluorescence agents until they discover that it requires approximately $500 million of capital and more than 10 years of development time in order to gain approval for a new targeted fluorescent drug, whereas we're benefiting from the approval status and reimbursement status of these existing and soon to be approved drugs. So that repurposing of radio tracers from diagnostic imaging into surgical guidance is a key part of our strategy. That also has the advantage that the surgeons have immediate familiarity with those tracers and we can take advantage of their proven efficacy in a diagnostic and follow-up context. We designed our technology to be maximally compatible with the Da Vinci surgical robot, but we're also equally compatible with other surgical robot platforms as well as open surgery. That has the advantage of rendering us compatible with the Da Vinci system, but we are not exclusive to their platform. We will begin initially with central lymph nodes, followed by prostate cancer lymph node metastases, and then expand into multiple solid tumors from there. 
And importantly, we're looking at US and EU market clearance this April. So just around the corner, we have submitted our technical file, passed our notified body audit, and likewise on track for our US clearance in central node biopsy as well. To make this more concrete, I'll show an example from a procedure. So here we are in a laparoscopic procedure in the retroperitoneum. The challenge for the surgeon is to find the positive lymph node, and very often these lymph nodes will reside centimeters below the tissue surface. They're invisible to naked eye, invisible to ultrasound, invisible to ICG fluorescence. So we're showing these data in audio mode at high frequency pitch. Excuse me, it's a bit loud. So that gives a surgeon immediate audio feedback. Forgive me, that was a bit loud, wasn't it? Sorry about that. <laughs> so where the surgeon heard that high pitch audio feedback, that indicated the presence of a positive node. And as we've published, we've been able to demonstrate a 100% identification rate at two and a half centimeters deep. So one of the advantages of this approach is that we also have very high tissue depth penetration as well. So where we see ourselves in the evolution of surgical oncology is that as we know, the field has moved from open surgery to minimally invasive surgery. Now robotic surgery with approximately 90% procedure penetration for radical prostatectomy in the US. And we see the next phase of the robot wars being how do we bring value added tools, sensing and analytics into the robotic platform with Medtronic bringing their robotic system to market soon. Likewise, J&J &J acquiring Oris and their share of Verb Surgical. We see that there's going to be an enormous competition in the surgical robotic space for those companies that can bring new sensing and analytic capabilities onto the robotic platform. As I mentioned, we will start initially with prostate cancer and then expand into other solid tumors with a focus on those procedures that benefit from minimally invasive and robotic surgery, where the specific clinical intervention depends on the cancer type. In lung, it's about occult lesion localization for ground glass opacities and solitary pulmonary nodules. In stomach, it's about lymph node metastases and tissue sparing. Uh, in uh, gynecology, for example, it's about lymph node metastases and tissue preservation. So all told across our indication strategy and key markets, we see an addressable market in the low billions. So we're looking at US and European clearance for our first indication this April, just around the corner, and then expand into prostate lymph node metastases with a target approval date of 2023, and then expand into our further solid tumors 2025 and onwards. So we have early revenue generation from our first product, added revenue from our robotic product, and then we will build from there. So uh, we're fortunate to have a highly experienced management team. I cut my teeth in Boston. I've worked previously in pharma and medtech GE Healthcare Novartis, where I looked after their clinical imaging program. Started my career in, in academia at Mass General Hospital Department of Radiology. And then Simon as our FD with uh, nearly three decades of life sciences finance experience. Claire Woodthorpe, legally qualified, looks after our manufacturing and quality. And Kunal Vias as a uh, PhD head of research, Cambridge trained. We're 25 staff in total with headquarters in UK and business development offices in Amsterdam and Boston. We're also equally fortunate to have a highly seasoned board of directors, uh, for example, Nadim Yared, who is chairman of AdvMed, the largest trade association for medical devices in the US. Our board consists of highly experienced surgical uh, device professionals with a focus on US marketing and sales. Over the course of the company, we've raised approximately 11 million pounds in ordinary share equity from a number of leading UK technology and uh, uh, financial investors. 
And additionally, we've raised approximately 13 million pounds in non-dilutive grant funding from both US, UK, and European funding agencies. Our ambition is to grow LightPoint into one of the surgical leaders in surgical oncology. We also aim to achieve a return for our shareholders with an exit to one of these three segments as the surgical device manufacturers are looking to move into the era of smart surgery and bring value-added tools onto the robotic platform. We're very well positioned in that space. Imaging, although they've been more passive for acquisitions, Philips, for example, has been very active in image-guided therapy with their acquisitions of Spectronetics and Volcano Imaging, and they're aiming to now get into the surgical robotics arena um, as evidenced by some of GE GE's recent investments in that area. And likewise, the diversified optics companies are also looking to bring their optics expertise into the surgical robotics space. We're here today to prepare for the launch of our EIS qualified growth round. We'll be raising 15 million pounds in order to support our build out of our US and European sales force. And uh, we'll, we're looking for both new money to fund this round and a significant number of our current shareholders will also follow on. So in sum, we have a groundbreaking technology addressing a urgent medical need with an enormous addressable market. And we invite you to be a part of our success. Thank you very much.